Hey clay friends, it's Amy here with Pennington Design Pottery and today I'm going to be showing you how to reclaim clay. So let's get started. So first off, what is reclaiming clay and why do we do it? If you are doing pottery, you're going to inevitably end up with this little bits of clay whether it be from trimming or a messed up pot and you kind of end up wondering what do you do with it because it is kind of wasteful to end up throwing it though i'm guilty of doing it in the past um but the best way to deal with this is to reclaim it which we are going to essentially turn this back into workable usable clay so though labor intensive, it is rather easy to do and will end up saving you money in the long run. So all you're going to need is your reclaimed scraps. You're gonna need water, a bucket, and if you have it, a plaster bat. And I'm sure I'll make a video eventually on how to make a plaster bat. Your local clay supplier may sell them and or um, I believe it's Good Earth Nation Pottery has a great video on how to make a plaster bat. So we are going to get started. I'm gonna move the camera so that you can see what I'm doing. So hold on one sec. All right, so when you are reclaiming clay, you want to make sure that you either wedge it up right away. If you make a mistake like this, you could have just thrown it onto a plaster bat, let it soak out some of the excess moisture, re-wedge it, and then reuse it. Um, but if it's gone past that point or it's things like trimmings, you want to make sure that you let them dry out to bone dry. So they just crumple up real nice and small and you could wear a mask during this, probably should wear a mask doing this just to avoid any dust that may kick up. Um, but I just let my trimmings dry out in my pottery wheel pan because um, I find it's easier than trying to scoop out all the little wet bits. Um, so I just let them dry. But when I'm throwing, I will take the slip from my bucket um, that I have been using for water because there always ends up being some of that in there. And I will take the slip out and just chuck it in a bowl or a bucket, um, let it dry out completely. And then we're going to put it in this bucket, combine them all and top it with water. Now you might be wondering about larger pieces like this. You can break them up. It's really not super necessary. It might save a little bit on space. Some of these pieces are pretty big. Um, so it might save us a little bit of space in our bucket to break it up a little bit, but it's not necessary. The water will penetrate because it's essentially like a dry sponge. Boy, this piece is really hard. Um, it's essentially like a dry sponge and it's just gonna wick up all that moisture pretty well. And these little bits, don't even worry about them, just dump them straight in. Now this might seem obvious, but you'll want to make sure that you keep your different clays separated. So if you have a red clay or even two different white stonewares or things like that, um, and make sure you either label your buckets or keep really good track of them so that you're keeping your clays separate. Next, we are going to take some water here and we are going to fill it to the top of our reclaim. And there's really not a worry of having too much water because we'll be um, soaking out any excess water with a sponge after the clay has soaked up whatever it wants to soak up. So we look like this now. So it goes just to the top of the reclaim. And now I'm going to let this sit for at least 24 hours just until I can stick my hand in there. Everything seems all good and mushy and like slip. Um, and then we are going to be mixing it up. So we're gonna let this sit and we'll be back in a day. Hey guys, it is 24 hours later and I'm back in the studio to finish reclaiming the clay. And something I forgot to mention before 
is if you have it, something that can make your job a lot easier is going to be one of these paint mixers that attaches to a drill gun. Um, it just saves you a lot of time to not have to sit here and hand mix it. It's not necessary. You can get in there with your hands and just squish it all up um, and do a pretty good job that way. But this does make it a lot easier. And then for sure for this part, you're going to want an apron because it does oftentimes get messy. So I'm going to put this on and then switch the camera over so you can see what I'm doing. All right. So before I get to mixing this, I'm going to take a giant sponge and go ahead and soak off any excess moisture at the top. Um, this is why I said you don't really have to worry about overdoing it because you can, we're just going to soak it all off anyways. Um, so just laying my sponge on the top so I can get off the excess moisture. And then I'll show you what we're left with. That's probably about good. So now I'm going to show you what's in the bucket here, which is this goopy, slippy, gunky muck. Um, it's kind of lumpy. Um, everything is soaked through. There's no dry bits. Um, and this is just about exactly 24 hours later. But there are some larger clumps that definitely need to get mixed in, which is where the uh, hand mixer comes in. So I am going to get to mixing. Now that I have mixed this up pretty well, um, just for maybe like a minute and a half or so, um, I'm going to dump it out on my plaster bat. This is going to help absorb the excess moisture and it will kind of depend um, on the slip and the humidity and things like that on how long I'll leave it on here. But I generally leave it for about another 24 hours. Um, and then we're going to either flip it if it's still a little bit too damp or we're going to wedge it up. So let's go ahead and pour this out and then leave it to rest. it's been another 24 hours later and the clay slurry mix has been lying on our plaster bat for that whole time and it is now um just slightly like i can drag my hand across it and get a little bit of wet clay off there but for the most part it's like perfect right where i want it so i think if i just wedge it up on the plaster bat it's gonna soak out any excess moisture um, and be ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and show you the consistency and then get to wedging. All right, so we have our ball of clay wedged up and we are finished. So I'm just going to stick this back in a plastic clay bag and it is perfectly usable as any other clay. Um, if you are finding that it is coming up short when you are throwing, so not getting the elasticity that it should um, and kind of breaking as you're stretching it, um, especially with things like handles, you can either just set this aside and let it rest for a while and you may get some of that back, or you can take half a bag of your new clay and wedge it in with the reclaim and that will help as well. So I hope that this video has been helpful for you and happy potting friends. <music>